Oh, no, nigga, what happened? I got jumped. You got jumped? By who? Some little niggas. Some little niggas? Listen, I think Baby Boy is one of those movies that even if you were born in the early 2000s, you know this movie by heart because BET, MTV, and VH1 played the mess out of it. And I gotta be honest, that's one of the reasons why this movie irks me and it took me forever to get through this movie. I had to constantly reset my brain for being annoyed to viewing this movie from a revered perspective. Jody triggers me, no lie. But as always, upon viewing this movie from my big age, I definitely noticed a few things, and you know we're gonna talk about it. So, let's get into it. So the movie starts off with Jody, played by Tyrese, what do you want from me, Gibson, being in the womb, and of course there's narration, because it's not a black classic film without narration. So Jody tells us that there is a psychiatrist named Dr. Francis Chris Wilson who has a theory about the black man in America. She thinks that because of systemic racism, black men view themselves as babies and have difficulty realizing their full potential. She supported this claim with three main examples. Black men call their significant others mama, black men call their male friends their boys, and black men call their homes their crib. Then briefly we see some agitation in the womb, which may be a sign that his peaceful complacent state is about to get a little uncomfortable. We then go to Jody sitting outside eating a box of lemon heads. He's currently waiting for his girlfriend and mother of one of his kids, Yvette, played by Taraji P. Henson, to come out of a women's clinic because she just had an abortion. She is clearly emotional, which is understandable, of course, and he's doing a lackluster job of consoling her. He takes her home, and she's laying down looking like an overgrown baby with a thumb in her mouth. <laughs> Jody comes over to check on her. He offers to go get her something to eat from Lucy's, a cheese enchilada and a strawberry milkshake. Child, that seems like a deadly combination to me. But anyway, he then asks her if she's going to go to sleep and tries to assure her that he's trying to be there for her. But she really doesn't want to be bothered. And then here he go. Well, then I guess you don't mind if I use your card in, huh? Oh, God. Since you're going to sleep. Dude, this girl just had an abortion not even an hour ago. And instead of being there for her, you're just like... Well, since you seem to be okay, I'm just gonna drive your car around and hop, skip, jump over to my other baby's mama's house. I'm sure you won't mind. Rest up, love. Like, dude, what the hell? So yes, he takes Yvette's car over to his other baby's mother's house, parks it in a driveway that's not his, interrupts Peanut's shower, that's her name by the way, and demands that she make him breakfast. Clearly, we see that Jody is selfish and a hot mess. So she makes some breakfast and as they're sitting down, Peanut's mother pulls up with Jody's daughter. And baby, Peanut's mother does not see it for Jody. She's probably experienced some Jody's in her day, so she knows how to spot them. <laughs> Jody appears to be an affectionate daddy though, holding his baby and playing with her. But we shall see that for now, that's all he's good for. And Peanut's mom knows it. We then go to Jody's mom, Juanita, played by AJ Johnson, and she has decided to start a garden in the backyard of her home. While she's telling Jody how she's gonna lay out her garden, she asks about Yvette. At least somebody cares about the poor girl, cause her son, <laughs> child. How's Yvette? She be all right, sleeping. Well, I can't be giving you money every time you get one of these girls pregnant, Jody. And then we meet mama's new man, Melvin. Now Melvin, mm, I liked Melvin. We should get into why later in the review, but baby Jody does not see it for Melvin. Jody wants his mama to himself and instantly views him as competition in a way. He's gonna have to compete with this man for his mama's attention and he don't like that. Hey, mama gotta have a life too. So we go to Jody and his friend Sweet Pea, played by Omar Gooding, who I will forever see as the dude from Wild and Crazy Kids. 
if you know, you know. He's telling Sweet Pea about his mama's new man and how he thinks that she will eventually try to kick him out of the house so that her and her man can have the house to themselves. I mean, would it be wrong? You got two babies by two women. I think it's about that time, bro. We then go back to Yvette, who was on the phone talking to her friend Sharika. She's trying to get through to Yvette about Jody and how she needs to cut him loose. But meanwhile, her ass is sitting up over here with a whole black eye. I mean, a fresh one at that. Baby, Sharika couldn't tell me nothing. Look, Jody be making threats, okay? He don't put his hands on me, no matter how mad he get. That nigga ain't crazy. Oh yeah, girl, how your eye feel? It's all right. It's all right. They were so petty with each other here. Anyway, Sharika brings up how Jody still stays with his mama and Yvette tells her that he doesn't want to leave his mama's house, which does not make sense at all. What'd he say about y'all getting a place together? Jody don't want to live with me. He want to live with his mama. And let him fuck his mama then, shit. Have her ass all up at the clinic, shit. We then go back to Jody, who is having a nightmare. And in this nightmare, we see images of Sweet Pea shooting into a trunk, him going to jail, him telling Yvette he loves her, him having sex with Yvette and Peanut and telling them both to have his babies. Child. Peanut and Yvette tell him that he scares them. And then the final image is him walking up to his own dead body and seeing everybody at his funeral. He's then walking out of this dream by Yvette's phone call, demanding that he bring back her car. You know, the one that she pays a note on. Come on, Jody, it's Monday, I can't be late. Monday? What is that supposed to mean? Get up, Jody! He finally gets up and takes her to work. As he's dropping her off, they kiss, not knowing that they have a small audience watching. So while Yvette is giving her son a goodbye kiss, this heifer, Pandora, makes a silent play at Jody. Jody don't know how to react, child. Like I said, a mess. Later on, Jody is back home with his mama. She's getting ready to go out on a date with Melvin. How do I look? All right, where y'all going? So Jody's berating her about Melvin and the dress she's chosen to wear for the date. He goes even further by questioning her interest in Melvin and how he's basically bad news and just like all the other guys that she's been with, she quickly puts him in his place though. You feel me? I got a date. I'm talking about I look all right. I look good. He then tries to take that stank energy to Melvin. Baby Melvin looking like he came straight out of Pimps R Us with the Stacey Adams to match. Ain't nothing to play with. He asks Melvin where he plans to take his mama Melvin sees straight through Jody. He was once much like him, probably even worse. So he knows what Jody is about. So where you live at, man? Where you from, homie? I live in Inglewood. The Hoovers. That was a long time ago. I was young and dumb. Finally, his mama comes in to save Jody from embarrassing himself even further. And they head out for their date. You need some money? Got a little change for you. Please, Jody, you ain't got no money. Hey, you be careful with my mama, man. Now, I know we often hear how some mothers can be overly obsessed with their sons to the point that they consider their son their man, but this is one of the few times where we see that dynamic switched. Jody low-key hated that this man was taking his mama's attention away from him. He saw him as competition, which is so, so weird. So we go back to Jody and Sweet Pea. They're out in front of the store talking and Jody decides that he wants to change. Today I begin a new life. For I am the master of my abilities and today is gonna be a great and beautiful day. What? Videos, homie. Videos, DVD, CDs, Master P, Charles Angels. It's crazy how I never noticed this cameo before. Rest in peace, John. Anyway, Jody asks Sweet Pea if he is a buyer or seller. And Jody is clearly not happy with his current situation and he's looking at everyone else making moves and making money, yet him and his boy are not a part of that action. All the real ball of successful folks are sellers. And all the broke ass people playing catch up are buyers. I ain't trying to go out like that, Pete. I'ma be a seller. Yeah, easier said than done, but yeah, 
he decides that he wants to sell women's clothing. He tells this to his mama and her friend, played by Monique, who give him much needed advice. They teach him how to sell to women, what matters to them, how to approach them, and they actually lead him down the right path. Mm -hmm. You gotta know a woman's size on site. And you gotta compliment them, mm -hmm. even if they big and ugly. Ooh, especially if they big and ugly. Like Bernice. That's a big bitch. So after taking their advice, Jody goes to a beauty shop. To be honest, I liked how he approached the owner here. He uses charming qualities for good this time. I was wondering if I can talk to a few of your customers, show them some of my merchandise. You know, I didn't want to just come in here and start talking to people without you blessing me. What you selling? Baby, she was like putty in his hands, child. But he ends up selling all his inventory to these women, spitting mad game, flirting for some sales, getting a little too touchy-feely though. But I guess it worked, even bargaining with this legend. I let it go for about $40. $40? Squeeze my tiny ass up in this. Upstage, these bitches up in here. You like this girl? Cute. Baby, I swear, since this movie, anytime something costs $40, I automatically say this line every time. Anyway, Jody ends up making over $400 that day, and baby, that money was hot in his hands because he goes to buy some clothes for Yvette and the kids from some boosters, and pimps out a ride that's not his. I mean, he put some tins on there, tinted the windows. Again, this car is not his. She pays the car note. This, this is just a mess. And while Jody's on a high for making shit happen for himself, he goes in his mama's kitchen thinking that breakfast he's smelling is for him. <laughs> Child. Want some breakfast? I would like to think Melvin was making him uncomfortable on purpose. And I can't show it, but baby Melvin was giving glossy brown butterball, okay? So later, Jody sees that his mama got a new big screen TV and the fact that TVs used to look like this and they used to be super heavy. And now like little kids can pick up 30 to 40 inch TVs cause they're so light and small. This is just wild. But anyway, he goes to turn the TV on and starts trying to work the TV. Melvin comes in soon after and baby, as soon as he sees Melvin, his whole mood changes. Well, I gotta hook up the VCR and set the timer on it. Open. I hooked it up and set it already. Pass the remote, youngster. Let me show you how it worked. Melvin ain't what he used to. He's crossing his T's and dotting his I's with his mama, and Jody don't know where he fits in anymore. <laughs> yeah, I was like you, Jody. <laughs> Young, dumb, and out of control. But you, oh, you smarter than I was when I was your age. Yeah, I gotta hand that to you. You smart, little man. So Melvin tells Jody that he plans to be around for a while and tells Jody that if he needs some advice, he'll be glad to help him out. But he did this in the most intimidating way as possible. His mouth was saying one thing, but his body language was on some other shit. He was clearly trying to get under his skin, just because, and he did. So while Melvin leaves out for work, Jody goes to confront his mama and asks her if Melvin is in fact staying with them now. You got this nigga living up in here now? What, am I supposed to have a life? You got a life! So Jody then asks her if she's gonna kick him out the house and clearly she's heard this all before. So you gonna kick me out? You gonna kick me out? Just let me know now, mama. Cause I don't need no surprises. I do, can you surprise me and move out? She then tells him he could learn a lot from Melvin, especially since he has turned himself around and has his own business, but he don't wanna hear that shit. Why are you so afraid to grow up and be a man? Leave the nest. I am a man. He then brings up her kicking him out yet again and tells his mama since she never left the nest, neither does he and he leaves the house. But little did he know, Sweet Pea heard all of this. Mama gotta have a life too? Fuck you, bruh. Child, then we go back to Yvette. And baby, why is she and her son walking in this California heat while Jody out here driving her car that again, she pays the note on? Girl. And she's pleading with his mama to do something about it. But of course, his mama says she's staying out of it. You know, some mamas don't ever have something to say about their son's child. You know he got me and his son out here walking while he rolling in my car. 
the car I'm paying the note on. Man, I feel so stupid. You ain't stupid, Yvette. Just in love with a man. Juanita gives Yvette some great advice, though, and she spoke a whole lot of truth. If the man ain't giving you no act right, the energy you need to love his ass even when he's acting like a bastard, then you need to let it go. If you ain't got nothing to give yourself or your baby, then how you gonna have it to give to him? So after all this truth had been spoken, of course, it had to get right back messy. Peanut shows up to pick up her baby. And guess who's holding her? And they have this weird exchange with each other. You could kind of see here that Peanut knew Jodu wasn't a prize anymore. Baby Yvette was pointing to that tattoo. Baby Peanut was like, and? <laughs> Girl, what's this supposed to mean? You out here walking. But baby, I can't show this next scene. But Melvin and Juanita were getting their lives. Loudly. And I was here for it. Jody wasn't though. Poor little Tink Tink. It must have been traumatizing for him. Anyway, so on another day, Sweet Pea and Jody are in his room talking. And Melvin walks by and gives his usual intimidating stare. So of course, Jody tries to talk his tough shit. You trying to psych me out, talking about you killing all old school nigga. You don't want us to have to put that heat on his ass, Billy P. Child, they ain't gonna do nothing but what they doing now. Jody tries to act like he about their life, but clearly he's not. That's why he's trying his hardest to stay up under his mama. But anyway, Melvin overhears all of this. You think you know everything about the damn world, and you don't know shit. You got to learn the difference between guns and butter. Now, what are the guns? The guns, that's the real estate. You know, shit that appreciates with value. What's the butter? Cars, clothes, jewelry, all that other bullshit that don't mean shit after you buy it. That's what it's all about. Guns and butter, baby. Dumb motherfuckers. Melvin decides to let the man on how the world works. Melvin's approach might be a little off sometimes, but he was speaking facts to Jody. But he and Sweet Pea was not trying to hear anything he had to say. So you know what I'm saying, cuz? This nigga come up in this motherfucker doing this shit every night, nigga. That's on the real cuz. What? Then we go back to Yvette and Jody in another argument. He doesn't see why she's upset about being left in her apartment all weekend because somebody, Jody, has had her car. Again, the one that she pays the note on. And he's still trying to hold a hostage. Babe, I, I, I just don't know. Jody is trying his best to duck and dodge her request for her own car keys. And she questions about where he was the other night. What you doing with this old ass pizza? Anyway, well, since you're coming up in here starting shit, where you been since yesterday, knuckle? She asked him if he had been messing around on her and requested to smell his private area. Girl, let's hope he had the decency to wash it off. But anyway, he tries to lie about what he was doing. But that don't work because there was a witness. Oh, you a bold faced lie, nigga. You went to that after I was spot on for Chris, Sean. I know because Chris was there. Sharika's Chris, you busted. It's all on your grill. And then his simple ass finally admits that yes, he was at the strip club, but he didn't do nothing. Child. She still doesn't believe him though, cause he with the shit, per usual. And baby, this argument just goes on and on until he decides to leave, again, in her car. So the argument goes outside and this neighbor is too obvious. Girl, you supposed to open up the blind from the bottom. What you doing? And of course, as we all know, in some toxic relationships, toxic arguments sometimes turn into even more toxic makeup sessions. Look at him. He's so proud of himself, Cheryl. So after they get done, she tells Jody that when she says she hates him, she really means that she loves him and that sometimes he scares her because he acts like they won't be together anymore. Jody assures her that they will always be together as long as he don't get shot or something. See, Jody has this fear of death or dying before his time. So, so much so that he claims that this was the reason why he made Yvette, and I'm guessing Peanut too, have his kids. It's almost like he's accepted that it's going to happen. But then he says this. So if something happened to you, what about me? You'll be all right. 
I guess these kids that you wanted so badly and the women you had them with don't even matter in the end, right? They'll be all right, I guess. But anyway, they've made up already. She makes him a meal and he's happy because he doesn't even have to change and he still gets everything he wants for now. We then go to Sweet Pea who's fighting for a place to lay his head because word got back to his girlfriend via Yvette about what went on at the strip club that night. Y'all in there, what you call it? Insinuating, insinuating it? Acting like y'all don't want me here? Fuck it, I'll leave. Y'all some unstable creatures. See, I ain't gonna say the B word. I'm gonna say unstable creatures. It's my new word for y'all. He then asks if Jody wants a drink and he takes this as an opportunity to ensure he won't get kicked out. So I, I love you and Kim. Y'all said y'all love me, bought me all these new clothes in the video game. Thought we had a family. Child, and brought this grown ass man clothes and a game. Might as well claim him on their taxes. My God. Anyway, so Jody talks this boy off the ledge and insists that they leave the house so that he can calm down. Where we going, Jody Joe? Let's go get some liquor. Strippers ain't at work yet. No, man, you don't need no liquor. You already too fired up. You the one responsible for all that shit them females in there put me through. Jody flinched so hard. <laughs> Baby Sweet Pea is just popping off at the mouth, telling Jody that he needs to find him a job. Child, what kind of codependent friendship is this? So Jody decides to give him a bone and gives him a piece of clothing to sell. And Sweepy decides on a dress out of all the things he could have picked. So let's dress him. No, man, that ain't right. Nigga, I know what I want to sell. So he goes to sell this dress and he almost has a buyer. That is until his temper gets in the way. What materials are made of? God damn, why you gotta be all technical? Huh? You wanna buy the dress or not? She gets him in check though, real quick. She lets him know that she knows it's a stolen dress. And he may be talking like he's trying to change his life for the better, but he's out here doing the same thing as everyone else. This short conversation gets to Sweet Pea and later serves as motivation for him to make some changes in his life. And then we go back to Jody and Yvette, and it's just another day full of drama for them. There's a call and they both reach for the phone. Hello? This is a collect call from the California Correctional Facility. Correctional facility. Do you accept the charges? Hell no. Turns out that Yvette's ex Rodney has been calling her from jail and she's been entertaining him on the low. And surprise, Jody is pissed. Cause you know, it ain't fun when the rabbit has the gun. Rodney, he lonely. He just wants somebody to talk to. It ain't deep. Don't trip. Oh, is that why you needed an extra hundred dollars for the phone bill last month? Didn't I tell you to put a block on the damn phone last week with your black ass? Child, why did Rodney call back? <laughs> and he read the hell out of Jody. Is this Jody? The Jody that got my boo pregnant and can't take care of his responsibilities as a motherfucking man? Living at your mama house? Nigga, you's a bitch. So anyway, Jody was talking king shit to Rodney over the phone. We know he wouldn't have had the same energy if he was face to face with him. You see how hard he flinched with Sweet Pea, right? But yeah, he tells Yvette to put a block on the phone ASAP. We then go to Sweet Pea and Jody talking outside while Jody is fixing one of the neighborhood kids' spikes. And she's so suspicious. Everything I do now, she think I'm fucking somebody. I go to the bathroom, she like, is there a bitch in there? Then I gotta come home. Gotta deal with Melvin and his bullshit. He never takes ownership of his actions. Jody was out here wilding out, having relations with all these women, and he couldn't fathom why Yvette questioned him all the time. Then the thing with Melvin, him not wanting to accept that his mother had a man and he was no longer going to be number one in everyone's life. I guess this is why he didn't understand why Sweet Pea said this. I wanna get saved. I want to be saved, Jody. I need to get baptized so I can go to heaven. I don't want Jesus to be like, turn your ass around, nigga. Jody automatically thinks that he must have done something bad to have these thoughts. But Sweet Pea has come to a point in his life where he knows he has to change. How he's living no longer suits him and he's ready to grow. I know you did something bad to be talking like this. I ain't done nothing, cuz. I'm just trying to keep from doing something. I got to ask my woman and her mama for money. How do you think that make me feel, huh? Think I feel like a man? Jody suggests that he finds something that he's good at, but Sweet Pea says the only thing he's good at is robbing. We then go back to Juanita, and her garden is looking good. 
She has set up her little chair and table by the tomatoes like she said she would. She's even putting Jody to work, cause you know he ain't got nothing better to do. And while he's out helping his mama, Melvin comes outside to check on them. Jody instantly gets up to go back inside. He still does not want to be around or near Melvin. Jody, we gotta stop all this. What? Why every time I come out here, you gotta go in the house? Man, ain't nobody thinking about you, bruh. So later on, Melvin decides to try to talk to Jody. But before he can even strike up a conversation, Jody decides to play Columbo and starts telling Melvin his own business. Child, he didn't track down Melvin's son, knows his name, knows his daughter's name, learned that he used to beat their mama back in the day. It's a lot. This guy is really trying to stay with his mama forever. Like, I ain't never seen nothing like it. But just as he thinks he's gotten under Melvin's skin, Melvin pulls a fast one. Mom. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Call for your mama. And baby Juanita just around here is so clueless. What y'all doing? Ah, uh, nothing. G give me a kiss. Watch your hands. Mm. Hurry back, okay? Okay. <laughs> you want something from the store? So we fast forward to Jody and this girl who works with Yvette, Pandora. And this is probably the messiest thing he's done so far. I mean, the bar is in hell, but this may take it just a little past that. So this girl starts asking him about Yvette, and he immediately cuts that short. I don't want to talk about Yvette. Well, we don't need to talk. I just want some dick. So Jody starts questioning why she wants to have sex with him and if she's trying to get under Yvette's skin. She claims that that's not what it is, but I mean, what else could it be? Regardless, this girl is putting it on strong. Every time Jody comes up with a reason to leave, baby, she puts up another detour. And Jody is trying his best to do right, and it's a struggle. And I truly want to know, out of all the times he messed around on Yvette, what made this be the one time he didn't go all the way? Like, I'm glad he was able to step away for once, but he should have had this will with everybody, not just her. But yeah, he leaves thinking everything is gonna be cool. Oh, but wait, sir, it's coming. So next day, while Yvette is at work, this girl is staring her down super hard, so hard that her other coworker notices and brings it to Yvette's attention. Why is that bitch staring so hard? I have no idea, but she about to get slapped. So after work, this girl walks out, and unlike the other day, she is not friendly with Jody, and they both show their disgust. <laughs> Yvette comes out, and she is already irked. They go your little girlfriend. How come you ain't waving at her today? She called herself staring at me today. That bitch was about to catch a beat down. Uh -uh. You gonna cook tonight? No. Lazy ass. Whatever. Child, why he ain't cooking? He ain't doing nothing else. But anyway, they head to Lucy's to get some food. And if this girl don't get this thumb out her mouth, he likes to be called daddy. And she loves to look like an overgrown child with a thumb in her mouth. Just tragic. Anyway, so after she offers to pay for the food, she reaches in the back for a purse and ends up finding an almost empty box of condoms. What's this? That's a pack of condoms. What you doing with that? Bruh, don't even. He really tried to flip it on her like that. The nerve. <laughs> the audacity. And Yvette starts going over all the things he said, like how he was gonna try to change, he won't hurt her no more, all the things Jody has said to pacify her over the years. And Jody is trying his best to mentally escape the situation by choosing to focus on the food. Give me my change. This is bullshit. Get the food. Thank you so much. So Yvette wants to know exactly who he used the condoms on, and Jody's old nasty ass has not one clue. You been fucking somebody in my car, Jody? No. Oh no. Oh no. You been with that many girls? That answer would have had me completely done. This dude is not good for her health at this point. Dude is living dangerously. Yvette asks him if he's still messing around with Peanut, and Jody doesn't say anything, but the silence confirms that he indeed is still messing around with Peanut. 
Jody tries to prolong the argument by suggesting they pick up their son from Yvette's mom's house, but it's a no-go because Yvette wants to finish what was started. So they finally make it home and Yvette just wants to know the truth at this point. A truth she already knows. I guess she really just wants confirmation that she's not being crazy or emotional. Jody is really out here being a whole entire slut bucket and he gives it to her straight, no chaser. You want me to be honest? Yeah, I do. Okay, you my woman and them other hoes is tricks. I make love to you, I wanna be with you, but I fuck other females from time to time. I don't know why, I just do it. Now, why would she feel better about that? Like, what are you even asking right now? Anyway, so Yvette asks him if he had sex with Pandora, and this dude responds in the worst way possible. You fuck Pandora? If you want me to, yes, I did. What you mean if I want you to? No, I don't want you to, Jody. Did you? You did, huh? Baby, Yvette is now fire hot. And with great reason, because why would he think this was ever okay? Why did he ever take it that far? He played around where she makes her money at. Like, what was the reason? And then, oh, it gets worse. He has the nerve to call her insecure. This bastard. Don't be so insecure, but I can't stand that shit, man. Jody, if I'm insecure, it's because you made me this way. Why did you have to fuck that girl out of all the people? Damn! Low key, she hit him hard as hell. But anyway, he decides he's hurt enough and yet again decides to leave in her car. Child, she blocks him from leaving and she's so mad. She just swinging on him and in the heat of the moment, she hits him in the eye. Get out the way. Shut up! Fucking out your mind or something? Now what, nigga? This went real left, real quick. This is a new low for them. Out of all the BS that Jody has done, he never hit Yvette before, but here he is doing the one thing that he said he would never do. And Jody doesn't think to apologize, say, my bad, it's never gonna happen again, none of that. He goes to what works. He does a sexual favor, thinking like all the other times that it will reset their relationship and everything will go back to normal. But he wasn't banking on this moment being the motivation that Yvette needed to snap out of it and realize that what they got, what they're going through is not it. So of course he leaves in her car and thinks everything is cool until the next day when he notices that Yvette's car is gone. Hi baby. Baby, listen, don't be mad at me, okay? It ain't my fault. One of the Mexicans stole your car. I stole my car, Jody. Baby, Jody is pissed. I mean, how dare she steal her own shit? He grabs his bike and rushes over to Yvette's to repossess her whip. Open the door, Yvette. Go away, Jody. Baby, I'm sorry I hit you, okay? You black my eye, too. What about me? What you mad at, girl? So Jody starts talking all the mess about him changing, him doing better, you know, the same things he's always said in the past and never meant. Yvette almost falls for it, but thankfully she sticks to her guns. You don't mean that shit. You just run in your mouth. Jody. Open this motherfucking door, girl. See, that's what I'm talking about. Why you gotta steal my car? Your car! This dude really thinks it's his car. Do you can put all the parts, wheels, and tent you want to on that car, but until you pay a note, until the title is in your name, my guy, it's not your car. I know this neighbor is annoyed as hell. I know I will be. She real brave for coming outside though. And this is the realest moment ever. Oh, fuck you, you bet. Fuck me, Jody. After all this shit I put up with with you, nigga, fuck me, fuck you. I felt that part. So after all this, Jody is all sad because his world is imploding and he's not able to use Yvette like he usually does. And of course, he goes crying to his mama and she doesn't take his side like he thought she would. I mean, I cheat, I do what I do, but I'm good. I'm good to her ass. Oh, he don't understand this shit though. What would you do if Yvette fucked around on you, took your car and left you in a hot ass house all day with a baby? How would you like it if somebody did all that shit you do to Yvette to me? Juanita tells Jody that he needs to think of Yvette as a woman. He knows he wouldn't like anyone treating his mama the way he treats Yvette. 
period. And it's said that it took Juanita framing it this way for him to see the errors, plural, of his ways. Now he wants to be remorseful. Yvette. So it's been a couple of days and Yvette is at the house talking to Sharika about Jody, talking about how she's through with him, girl. And baby, I would have to get off the phone with Sharika because her and her man are way too much for me. Lights on, anyone home? I definitely feel you. Bitch, get off the goddamn phone and come on over here so I can drop it off in your drawers. Child. Anyway, so their phone conversation ends awkwardly. And guess who decides to pop up unannounced? Oh, shit. What's happening, baby? I'm home. Damn, what you got to eat up in this uh motherfucker? Shit, hungry as fuck. Yeah, not what she expected. So we go to Jody and he's getting him some drink from the store. And these dudes try to steal his bike. One of them might even look a little familiar to you. So of course, he runs to his boy Sweet Pea because he can't seem to fight his own battles. Hell no, nigga, what happened? I got jumped. You got jumped? Bro. Some little niggas. Some little niggas? So they go lurking, trying to find the guys that jumped him, and they end up finding them at a neighborhood park. So Sweet Pea walks up to them acting like he's drunk. And I don't know about y'all, but my antennas would have went up as soon as I saw him. Baby, he's leaning on y'all and y'all laughing thinking it's a joke. No wonder they got got. And they try to run, but Jody and Sweet Pea rein them in. They line them up and check their pockets, but of course they don't have anything worth taking. So they sit them up to teach them some manners. And cuz you tried to take my bike. Oh, oh, oh. oh Jody Joe, what type of bitch ass punch was that? Oh, you mean to tell me this little nigga's teeth is harder than your fist? Gotta show you I was done, baby boy. So Sweet Pea takes it upon himself to show Jody how to punch. And they take each guy down, one by one, until they reach the one that started it all in the first place. Turns out, little dude got heart, so Sweet Pea decides to punish him another way, by spanking him like his mama and daddy should have. This brings up some traumatizing feelings for Jody, probably something from his upbringing. He's unable to laugh about it. We go back to Yvette and Rodney, child. Rodney trying to take Jody's spot. He's trying his best to get into Yvette's bed. Yvette just went from one freeloader to another. Poor baby just trapped in her own home. Anyway, so the next day, Jody finally comes over to Yvette's. He's thinking that after so many days, they're just going to get right back into the swing of things. He's knocking on her door all confident. He's thinking it's all good. But surprise, it ain't because Rodney has taken his spot. And why did she leave their kid at the house with him? There's no way I would have left my baby there with that man. And I know for a fact he resents him. Nah. But anyway, Jody doesn't want no smoke. And he gets his son and heads out. But Rodney needs to know, where was all the energy he had on the phone? Hey, nigga. Hey. You better ride the bike. You sound real hard on the phone, nephew. But as we've come to know, Jody doesn't do confrontation. So he leaves with his son. Later on that night, Yvette comes to pick up their son. Some niggas still at your fucking house? No. I ain't asked Rodney to come to my place, Jody. He just showed up. And I'm not fucking him if that's what you're thinking. Yvette then tells him that the car has broken down and her engine needs fixing. Child, I wonder why. Everybody been riding their car more than you. And it's no surprise that Jody doesn't see this as his problem and slams the door in her face. Baby, Yvette goes to the car and she is distraught at the fact that Jody might not love her anymore. I wanted to shake her so bad right here. Like, girl, what are you even missing out on at this point? More pain? More lies? More car troubles? Girl. And as soon as Yvette leaves, Jody tries to get some attention from his other baby mother, Peanut, but she's not feeling him no more. Look, I'll tell you what. When I want some dick, maybe I'll call you and then you can find a way to get here. I... I guess he heard that. But then, things get even worse. <laughs> Juanita finds weed in her garden and automatically blames Jody. You trying to say I planted that shit? Who oh, am? Well. Why would I want to put some weed in my mama's garden? Shut up, Jody! What kind of fool you think I am, mama? Where's Melvin? Ask him. So Melvin finally gets home and Jody and Juanita are waiting for him. 
Baby, Jody didn't even give him a moment to breathe. She found the weed you was growing on the side of her tomatoes. Go ahead and tell her about it so she can get off my case. You did it, huh? And this is where Melvin teaches Jody how to be accountable. I don't want to understand it. What's the, what, what was that about? I made a mistake. I'm sorry. It won't happen again. So Juanita goes to sit back down. Because, I mean, what can she say to Melvin after that? He confessed, he apologized, and said he won't do it again. She can't do nothing but trust him, since this is his, technically his first fuck up. She shall see eventually if this becomes a habit. However, what she could have done was apologize to Jody for accusing him though. Now Jody is a liar, but he didn't lie this time, and she could have acknowledged that. Though I get it was probably very hard to do. Oh, the truth hurt, don't it? How you think I feel? You up in there laid up with this thug ass nigga you don't even know who wanna kick me out the house so we could be around here doing whatever. I can take care of myself. So Juanita is not only frustrated, she's fucking tired of Jody and everything that comes with him. She finally sets a permanent boundary between them. This my house too. Your house? Do you pay any bills up in this motherfucker? This is my house, mine. And if I wanna bring a man all up and through here, I bring a man all up and through here. That's my say, not yours. And this response brings in Melvin, who is probably delighted at this current conversation. Something tells me that they have been having conversations about Jody, and he's giving his two cents, but he was just waiting on her to give him a sign or maybe tag him in so that he can say what Jody really needs to hear. And baby, he was ready. But you need to grow up and be a man. Be a man? What you mean, like you? You a man? No, little nigga, you can never be like me. You don't need to be like me, but what you need is to stop sitting around here trying to blame everybody for your problems. And of course, Jody wants to risk his luck and his face by making a threat to Melvin, and Melvin thinks it's cute, until. I swear, he punched Jody so hard, his ancestors felt that shit. So Juanita is struggling to break them apart and Melvin is having a hard time reining it back in. He's probably having flashbacks. Jody is in shock because somebody finally got his ass and his mama couldn't save him. So Melvin is over it and knows that being in a house with Jody is going to cause him to go to jail. So he decides he's got to go. So as soon as Melvin says he's leaving, Juanita runs to him and begs for him not to go. This infuriates Jody because how dare she choose this man over him? You gonna choose this nigga over me? You are not a baby anymore. You are not a child. So Jody goes to his room and grabs the one thing he actually owns. And before he leaves, he tries one more time to get under his mama's skin. But this time, she stays firm. If I get killed, it's on you, mama. You got your own life. Mama got a life too. So we go back to Yvette and child, she still hasn't been able to get rid of Rodney. She's just a fuckboy magnet at this point. It's a sad sight to see, especially since her son has resorted to building a fort to protect himself because he doesn't feel comfortable around this guy. I don't understand why this even went on for as long as it did. My child being uncomfortable, scratch that. Me having a child and making sure he was protected would have had me calling his parole officer. I don't care, I don't care. But anyway, she's yelling at Rodney to get up and leave her house. He wakes up sea walking on bacon and he chooses violence. He goes to her room and tries to SA her because he wants her to have his baby like she had Jody's. Some dudes be wanting babies for attachment purposes, not because they actually want to be parents or even have a family, but Anyway, the only reason he reconsidered not SAing her was because her son was trying to stop him mid attempt. This had to have been just as traumatizing for her son as it was for her. I want my daddy. I know, baby. Fuck your punk ass daddy, nigga. I do too. So we fast forward to Yvette coming over Sweet Pea's house to see Jody. Jody sees her and tries to act all nonchalant. Yvette hesitates for a second, but goes to sit by him. For a couple of seconds, they don't speak. They just give each other awkward glances. And just as Yvette gets up to leave, he stops her. 
Why you try to act all mad? It's like you don't miss me. Rodney tried to me in front of JoJo. Miss you. I miss your ass so much. <laughs> I love you. You my rib. Oh no. <laughs> Not your rib. Ciao. So Yvette goes to her apartment to get her things and Rodney's there. And of course, he takes her car. It's community property at this point. So again, she's stuck in the house. And why the hell did she go back to the house by herself alone after what he already tried to do? Like that, that didn't make no type of sense. So anyway, Jody is still at Sweet Peas waiting for Yvette to come back. They're planning Rodney's demise, but Jody is not with it. I ain't trying to be no killer. I can't have that on my heart, P. Come on, let's pray on it. So Sweet Pea decides to pray on it. And it's genuine. Show us the way. And if you can't show us the way, then forgive us for being lost. So while Sweet Pea and Jody are plotting on Rodney, Rodney and his boys are plotting on Jody. So while Jody and Sweet Pea are sitting outside, they see Yvette's car coming around the corner. So Jody gets up to greet her. The car stops for a second, so Jody thinks Yvette is playing with him. Baby, Jody saw a peak of the Preston curl and thought it was Yvette. Child. It wasn't though. It was Rodney and he runs down on him and Sweet Pea. For a moment, Jody thinks he's dead. I mean, he does a full on exaggeration. Got Sweet Pea thinking he's gone. Dude doesn't have a scratch though. He really thought he was out of there. So that whole can't have that on my heart stuff goes straight out the window. And Sweet Pea and Jody set up their plan to get Rodney. Rodney finally returns to Yvette's car, but Yvette is not home and the lights are turned off. Rodney then goes outside to investigate and realize that everyone else's lights are on, but Yvette's. He goes downstairs to manually switch the lights back on and lo and behold, he runs into Sweet Pea and Jody. He quickly chin checks Jody, of course, cause he definitely wasn't gonna go for Sweet Pea. And as he's running, Sweet Pea tells Jody to shoot but of course, Jody hesitates. Run! They run up to him to finish the job, and Jody just can't do it. Shoot me, you punk motherfucker! I done seen everything except Christ anyway, motherfucker! Shoot me, nigga! And Jody's ass can't take what he's just done. He goes back to his mama's house and he's stressed out and even thinking about unaliving himself. Melvin comes into his room and he's calm. And without Jody having to tell him anything or even what happened, Melvin already knows and he responds with empathy and concern, not judgment. This was the moment that their relationship shifted and Jody realized that Melvin wasn't the enemy. Melvin takes the gun away from him and I guess he gets rid of it probably put it in the garden somewhere. But yeah, they cool now. Jody eventually makes his way to Yvette's house and their nightmare is over and they're back together again. And Jody is officially a changed man. So we fast forward to Jody going back to his mama's house. I guess it's been a few days at this point. We really don't know, but she instantly thinks Jody wants something. What you want, Jody? Some money? I ain't got no money right now. I no, mama. God. You want some money? <laughs> Hell yeah, I want some money. 20 years worth. Juanita tells him that she knows him and Melvin had a talk the other night, and Jody admits that he's glad that her and Melvin are together. It's good to see you happy. I just thought once you get a new boyfriend, you was gonna kick me out. I'm a rider for mine, for real. Juanita ends up giving him some sound advice. You know, you don't know the kind of cards life's gonna deal you, but why you down here? You better watch your back. He tries to sip her wine, but she not going. He's grown now and he needs to get his own. As much as she wanted him to be grown and be a man, she still hated to see him out on his own. He says bye to Melvin and as he leaves out, he makes a joke about knowing good music and he plays this classic. What you know about that, Melvin? Uh, that's my shit, youngster. I used to get a lot of pussy off of that song. <laughs> and surprise, he actually moved in with Yvette and knocked her up for the second time. 
Sweepy ended up getting baptized for real and dedicated his life to the Lord, his girlfriend, and her mama, the Thruple. And that's pretty much the end. And here are my final thoughts. Like I said before, Jody was a mess. He was incredibly selfish and thought that the world revolved around him and every woman in his life had to cater to his every need. This man had two babies by two different women, stayed with his mama and was not trying to leave that comfort and felt that this was 100% okay because nobody was there to tell him he needed to grow up or improve his way of life. He felt no guilt about having relations with both the mothers of his children and other women because in his world, his happiness or mental well-being was all that mattered. If we go back to the scene where Yvette asked about what would happen to her and her son if he were to pass, and he nonchalantly says, y'all will be okay, this showed that he really didn't take their feelings or livelihood into account. He figured, you know, you find a way to figure it all out now, you will then. And it's sad because you realize that these women were carrying such a heavy burden by dealing with him. He brought nothing but chaos and confusion to every relationship. And his go-to to fix it all was either by him using his charm, sex, or guilt. For instance, the first argument we saw with him and Yvette about the strip club. He used charm and sex to get back in her good graces. He used charm and sex to sell his merchandise. He used guilt to get over his mama every time she told him to find somewhere else to stay. Jody was fighting tooth and nail not to grow up. And the way he fantasized about dying and death, like where did that even come from? It was almost like he was wishing it upon himself. And let's talk about his conflict with Melvin. In the beginning of the film, we saw him content in the womb, safe and comfortable. And then we see some agitation. I believe that agitation came from a lot of things, but the major one was Melvin. Melvin was a real street dude and he saw right through Jody. He was a reformed gangster, if you will, who had turned his life around. And there was a lot of things he could have learned from Melvin if he wasn't so busy being threatened by him or thinking that this man is taking his mama away. Melvin came in and treated his mama with respect, took her out, catered to her. He didn't show any signs of being the type of men his mother had dated before. And most importantly, when he messed up, he showed accountability. He apologized and that was that. He didn't delve into the same mind games and hood antics like Jody did with Yvette. Yet and still, Jody fought him the whole way. He got mad seeing this man come in and do what he was supposed to do. And I think he responded this way because Melvin showed him where he was lacking and he didn't like that. I mean, how dare this man show up and show out and make him realize he really ain't shit. Melvin's approach was sometimes intimidating and a bit much, but still he did speak a lot of truth to Jody and Sweet Pea. And while Sweet Pea eventually got it together on his own and sought change, Jody was fighting tooth and nail for things to remain as they had always been. He tried to keep the women in his life under his thumb, kept Yvette in the house while he was out joyriding in her whip, tried to call her insecure for questioning his whereabouts, we had proven time and time again he can't be trusted. And even when their relationship got to the lowest of the low with them hitting each other, he still thought that if he showed up and hit her with a bit of sex and charm, that everything would be good and he could still do as he's always done. Jody was trying to convince everybody that he was a man and he wanted to be called a man, but he avoided every ounce of the responsibility that came with actually being a man. And even though he eventually got it together at the end and officially became a family man with Yvette, the fact that it took so long and so much drama, hell, even killing a man for him to say to himself, I'm ready to change, baby, it wasn't even worth it. Yvette should have left a long time ago. And truth be told, Juanita and Yvette enabled him for far too long. So him choosing her in the end wasn't even all it was hyped up to be. I was exhausted for Yvette and that damn car. But anyway, that's it. I'm over this damn movie. <laughs> Thanks for watching per usual. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.